Hello everyone and welcome back to the Imachines TV channel. The construction of the Hida Shinano HVDC mainline, spanning six sections, was initiated as a national project to address the power supply shortage in Japan following the Great East Japan earthquake. Its primary objective was to strengthen the power interchange between eastern and western Japan by upgrading the frequency conversion facilities. The project involved various phases and challenges. One of the major tasks was the construction of the sixth section, which extended across the difficult terrain of the No Yamagadaki Pass, spanning Gifu and Nagano prefectures. The rugged landscape and harsh conditions posed significant engineering obstacles, requiring innovative solutions to overcome. Throughout the construction process, a strong emphasis was placed on safety, and the project was completed without any accidents, ensuring the well-being of the workers involved. The tight construction schedule added to the complexity of the project, but effective project management and coordination played a crucial role in its successful execution. The upgraded Hida Shinano HVDC mainline now serves as a critical power transmission route, connecting eastern and western Japan. This infrastructure improvement is expected to contribute to regional economic development and enhance the power supply resilience in the event of disasters. The project to construct the Hida City Nano DC mainline began in response to the Great East Japan earthquake that occurred on March 11, 2011. The earthquake caused significant damage to many power plants, resulting in a decrease in power demand in eastern Japan. The power supply situation became tight, and the maximum power had to be transmitted from western Japan to the eastern region. However, due to limited capacity, a frequency conversion facility was needed for this transfer. To address the issue of insufficient power supply, the country decided to strengthen inter-regional interconnection lines. As part of this effort, two key locations were chosen for the construction of new facilities. Chubu Electric Power Grid in Takayama City, Gifu Prefecture, established the Tobita Converter, and Tepco Power in Asahi Village, Nagano Prefecture, established a connection to the Shin Shinano substation of the grid. This new DC trunk line increased the operational capacity from 900,000 to 2,100,000 kilowatts upon completion. The construction site was situated in a mountainous area known for heavy snowfall, between Mount Norikora and Mount Ontake, including Nomugi Pass. The Hida City Nano DC mainline's construction started from Hida Hen intersection near Ichimatsunogi Pass, running parallel to Seizuragi Highway Route 41, crossing Junior Takayama mainline, and continuing along the high center line of 275 kV. At an elevation of 1,852 meters, it passed near Nomugi Pass, ranging from 1,200 meters to 1,600 meters in altitude. The line then traversed the Hachimori mountainside in Nagano Prefecture, passing through three cities and intersecting with the Katsuragawa Line and the Takasagawa Line, ultimately leading to the Shin Shinano substation in Asahi Village, Nagano Prefecture. The total length of the line was approximately 89 kilometers, supported by 197 steel towers.
The construction process of the new DC Main Line faced various challenges, including heavy snowfall during winter periods. The site office was packed with employees, and preparations were made for the work to commence once the spring thaw arrived. As snow melted and late spring approached, animals became active, and the construction site was surrounded by flowers and vibrant nature. The construction work continued throughout summer, and the project paused during autumn to admire the beautifully colored leaves. With the arrival of winter, the construction site closed down, allowing the mountains to rest until the next season. The project required careful planning and coordination. The storage space for construction materials, including tower components, was established, along with monorails and working helipads. Land negotiations were conducted to secure rental agreements, which involved confirming the ownership of forests and other relevant areas. The construction work was carried out by Toco Electric Works, which had a track record in transmission line construction. The company assigned various teams, and each team took responsibility for different sections of the project. The construction proceeded in stages, with the principal, Takeshi, overseeing a 10.6 km segment. Excavation work was a significant part of the construction process, particularly for fixing the steel tower deep in the ground. The use of heavy equipment was suitable for areas where access was possible. However, due to the mountainous terrain and lack of suitable roads, manual labor and deep foundations were adopted. Logging work was carried out in areas without forest roads, requiring collaboration with the local forestry office and contractors. Steep slopes were scraped to create working roads and forest roads for transportation. Monorails were utilized on slopes, and short pipe piles were driven for stability. Temporary facilities, such as Panro, were constructed to ensure safe working conditions. The foundation work involved reinforcement assembly of the deep foundation to withstand severe wind and snow. The installation of huge wooden materials and the pouring and curing of concrete were critical steps. Tokyo Electric Power Company conducted inspections to ensure correct installation, and the concrete was transported from a plant located about 40 minutes away from the site. The transportation process in mountainous construction involved overcoming challenges such as steep slopes and significant height differences. Throughout the construction process, safety was a top priority. Safety officers were responsible for ensuring the well-being of workers, and safety education sessions were conducted. Cooperation among different companies and subcontractors was essential, and strong communication and teamwork played a vital role in maintaining a safe and efficient work environment. After the concrete placement is completed, the surrounding area is backfilled, and the ground is leveled cleanly. Stringent inspections are conducted to ensure that there are no problems with the prosecution before proceeding to assemble the pets. One of the key aspects of the project involves the foundation work. Toko Electric Construction is responsible for the 25th Terms Foundation, with an average height of 10.7 meters and a depth reaching up to 20 meters at its deepest point. Surprisingly, 
the height of the tower's foot remains relatively consistent, even in mountainous areas. The Shinso Ipon eating method is employed, which involves digging a deep foundation for each of the four steel tower legs rather than creating a larger foundation in the center. High-speed rebar is meticulously inserted, and concrete is poured while the reverse agent is installed, utilizing an innovative construction method. The construction team ensures that the ground resistance of the steel tower falls within the specified value before confirming the completion of the foundation work. In October 2018, President Aoki of Toko Electric Works visits the construction site, which is located near a rice field. The workers' dormitory and the surrounding area are thoroughly inspected, emphasizing the company's commitment to unity with the site and the value placed on conscientious electrical work. Assembling the steel tower poses its own set of challenges. The steel materials are transported to the site via monorail and temporarily assembled on the ground. The construction team expertly utilizes the limited space and topography to their advantage, considering the merits and drawbacks of each situation. In areas where heavy machinery cannot access, such as narrow spaces or mountainous regions, the installation of a climbing crane is not feasible. Instead, the steel tower is assembled behind the traditional Daibo structure, optimizing efficiency. A winch on the ground, connected to the pulley at the end of Daibo, facilitates the lifting and assembly of the steel tower. This method is employed during the construction of the Hida City Nano DC mainline in mountainous areas, where numerous constructions take place in narrow spaces. Skilled workers employ various techniques during this large-scale assault. Once the tower structure is assembled, the focus shifts to installing the arm part for attaching the transmission line. The arms are initially assembled on the ground and then lifted up using Daibo, facilitating installation. Strict inspections are conducted to ensure the quality and safety of the completed steel tower. After the inspections, the construction of the steel towers reaches its climax as they are built one after another. A prayer ceremony for safety is held before the selection process, with workers gathering in a rice field to offer their prayers. Finally, the transmission line is connected, marking a significant milestone. Line work commences, beginning with the first pilot using a helicopter. A thin nylon rope called toil is attached to a steel tower and gradually replaced with a thicker wire. The electric wire and wire rope are then connected, with the wire rope being wound at the engine field. Skilled workers manually attach the electric wires to the steel tower using wedge-shaped clamps, providing crucial support. Spacer installations are carried out to prevent the wires from colliding, ensuring the longevity of the transmission line. Workers use gondolas suspended from power lines to install the wires along the power line, one by one, gradually moving along the route. This process is repeated for each section of the railway lines until completion. Throughout the construction process, various companies, including Post Power Transmission Construction Company, Limited, collaborate closely. 
The Umamora English newspaper's general manager and linemen provide valuable insight and serve as lecturers, further enhancing the cooperation between companies. The restoration work following heavy rains in Hida City requires immediate action. Local construction companies, with the support of Toko Electric Construction, work tirelessly to restore collapsed areas and damaged guidance. Despite facing challenges, they managed to complete the intensive recovery work in just 10 days. In the mountainous regions of Fukushima, Japan, stretches the 275,000-volt high-voltage transmission line, known as the Niigata Trunk Line. Owned by Tohoku Electric Power, this transmission line covers an extensive distance of 24,500 kilometers. Supporting this network are over 58,000 steel columns and towers. However, some transmission lines face challenges due to tree growth and urbanization, which require ground height adjustments. To address these issues efficiently, a new innovative device has been developed, the Anarch 160 steel tower raising device. The Anarch 160. The Anarch 160 is a groundbreaking steel tower raising device that utilizes a rack and pinion system. It features eight built in gear mechanisms, equipped with a rack gear system and a central pinion gear. This system allows the device to raise steel towers at a speed of 40 centimeters per minute. In just 40 minutes, it can raise towers up to a height of 15 meters. This significantly reduces the downtime during construction and leads to cost savings. Collaborative Development The Anarch 160 is a collaborative development effort between four companies, Fukushima Branch of Tohoku Electric Power, Fukushima Technical Center, Yamaka Denki, and Corner Toyo Machinery. These companies jointly applied for a patent as part of their efforts to introduce this new steel tower raising device. Enhanced capabilities. Compared to the previous lifting device, the Power Lifter 80, the Anarch 160 offers twice the lifting capacity, capable of handling steel towers with a size of 610 square millimeters and higher transmission wire sizes. Additionally, the repetitive lifting process is eliminated, leading to a significant reduction in construction time. Improved safety and efficiency. 
The ANARC-160 incorporates a telescopic lift mechanism, allowing for the assembly and disassembly of tower sections from the bottom, minimizing work at heights and greatly improving safety. The device also features laser distance sensors to monitor the tilt of the towers during the raising process, ensuring precise alignment. Safety measures such as upper and lower limit switches and emergency stop buttons are integrated into the system. Structure of the ANARC-160 The ANARC-160 consists of four main components. The first is the base foundation, which is installed at the center of the steel tower. This foundation eliminates the need for acquiring additional land for assembly. The second component is the power unit, consisting of eight sets of pinion gears and reduction gears, enabling the lifting functionality. The third component is the rack gear, attached to the support columns, which are raised to the planned height by the power unit. The fourth component is the end fitting, which connects and adapts to the varying sizes of steel towers at eight different points. Assembly process. The assembly process of the ANARC-160 takes place within the steel tower itself, eliminating the need for additional land. The base foundation is first installed at the center of the tower, and then the main unit frame is secured on top of it. The slide guides are attached to prevent any lateral movement. The rack gear is installed on the support columns, which are gradually lifted to the desired height using the raising mechanism. Finally, the end fittings are connected, ensuring the integration of the device and the steel tower. Conclusion. The ANARC-160 steel tower raising device represents a significant advancement in efficiency and safety for the construction and maintenance of high-voltage transmission lines. Its unique rack and pinion system, along with its enhanced lifting capabilities and reduced construction time, make it a cost-effective solution. By streamlining the assembly process and minimizing work at heights, the ANARC-160 improves the overall efficiency and safety of steel tower construction ensuring the continued reliability of power transmission networks.